welcome or welcome back to Four of Beauty. When will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. However, what I do know, and now you obviously know because you've seen the thumbnail, you've read the title and possibly even read the description box, is that this is my first impression tutorial stroke review with the latest monochromatic palette from Colourpop, the Aha uh -huh Honey. So, if you want to find out just how well this palette performs, whether I think it's worth getting and how easy it was to achieve this look then my friend you are in precisely the right place grab a drink grab a snack put your feet up and enjoy hey welcome back from the intro you will have seen this, well, yes, in the outside of this, in the intro. I'm pretty sure most of you know what the inside of this looks like. But in case you don't, this is the Uh Huh Honey. I'm not keen on the fact that they're using plastic packaging, environment and stuff. But they do include this sort of spongy thing in here help protect the shadows because obviously cardboard um, cushions shock from being dropped more than plastic does so I'm glad they put this in here because this did come all the way from the US without breaking. Now I have done swatches I'm going to pop them up on screen while I'm talking. Uh, you've got Stinger, Sunburst, Sweet Spot, Dandy, Palooza, which I'm going to talk more about in a minute. Queen Bee, Totally Bugging, Obehave and Buzzkill. I think that might be my door. Hang on. It was the door. It was the postie. Right. Palooza. Beautiful pressed glitter. However, it's not suitable for use in the eye area. Right. All the other nine pan monochrome palettes that you've done. Just my luck. It's my pleasure. Ooh la la. Blue Moon, which I didn't buy because I've got Jeffrey's Blue Blood and a lot of other blue palettes. And the. What was the, the watermelon one? Which again I didn't get because I've got Blood Sugar. All of those are curated nine pan palettes where every single shade can be used on your eyes. So why? When we've waited so long for a decent yellow palette, are uh, two of the shimmers a gold and a bronze, not a yellow? And why have you put a glitter in there that we can't use on our eyes? Why didn't you do something like... Um, This is one of the NYX Gilded Shadows and this is in shade, uh, oh no it's Prismatic Shadow and the shade is Gilded, look at this. Look how beautifully reflective that is. 
I have used this in a tutorial where I did a really simple yellow and purple tutorial Ooh, way back at the start of my channel so I was really hoping that the centre shape was going to be something like this or um, I've noticed recently they've, they've, they've managed to do their super shock shadows in palettes that are not because the majority of their super shock shadows if you leave the lid off they dry up and you just can't use them um, but I've noticed they've started to do some where they've got the super shock shadows in a palette so they've obviously done something to the formula that they can now use it in a non hermetically sealed um, container so I, I really don't understand why if you'd done all of the other palettes like that I could understand it but why do this with the yellows it really has annoyed me because when I first saw that I was like oh, stick that all over the lid it's gonna be beautiful and then I thought when I swatched it I thought Ooh, those those glitter chunks are a little bit big so I grabbed the carton and Palooza's got an asterisk next to it doesn't have an asterisk on here it does tell you on the label on the back, but if you're someone who just opens it up and goes, oh my god, and starts putting it on your face, Palooza is not intended for use in the immediate eye area. Why? Why do this to us? Why couldn't you have put a really beautiful, bright, light, yellow shimmer in there? Because the shimmers that we've got... whilst pretty, really only this one you could call a yellow. This is a gold, this is a golden bronze. It's not yellow is it? It's gold. And I really wish they'd gone for a slightly, uh, yes still include this mustardy um, yellow because I love that. But you could have gone a couple of shades deeper as well so we've got something to really deepen the colour up with. So. I've got complaints with this before I even try it on my face. But you know what I'm like? You always get the truth from me. So, uh, I'm going to start chucking some of this on my face. Now, uh, this is a teaching channel, so I go in depth into every step. All of the blending is done in real time uh, so that complete beginners can follow me with ease and with comfort. Also because of my chronic pain I can't blend as fast as a lot of people can. I have to take regular stops when I chat to you. Um, so if you're finding that uh, I'm going a wee bit too slow for you please use the speed widget and just speed me up. I'm not going to be offended because let's face it I'm not going to know. Right let's get you zoomed in. Uh, on my face it is washed, moisturised SPF and a prime with my usual antiperspirant primer. This visitor is not leaving and it's getting very frustrating now. I just think they're going and then they'll, they'll come back again. And I'm just like, ah, boomerang spot. Great, I'm going to start charging that rent. Um, <laughs> the eye primer that I've used, which amazingly hasn't creased on me, I love this. This is the, the Crow and Pebble. Uh, the white one that they call cotton. Now they do, I think it's six different shades. Uh, the deepest one, or the deepest two being a very, very deep chocolate and a pure black. So hopefully you should be able to find something that works for your skin tone. Um, I really like this, particularly when I'm using lighter colours. Regular viewers know that I usually use either concealer or MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot. Um, but this is great. I, I got this when I was trying out their pastel pigments. Uh, if I think on, I'll link that film um, in the description box. This is a revelation. Absolutely love this. I've tried it with a number of different eyeshadow formulas now. I've tried it with Juvia's, I've tried it with Jeffree Star. Um, I've tried it with uh, Blush Tribe, I've tried it with September Rose, um, what else have I tried it with? Revolution, 
and I can't think of the last one that I've tried it with, but I've, I've tried it with a lot of different formulas and it's worked with all of them, so I'm really happy about that. Now, last little bit of blethering before I start going to put colour on my face. Now, I've actually got deep set eyes, which are also called double lidded eyes. Now, a lot of people with deep set eyes think they have hooded lids because we have all the same issues. We have transfer of shimmer onto the upper lid. Uh, when we cut our crease, we can't just follow our socket line, we have to cut up onto the upper lid. And even when we use glitter glues, we get a bare patch, usually right through the crease. Now, I'm going to explain to you the difference between hooded lids and deep set eyes or double lidded eyes because they are actually different. Right, when I relax my brows and look straight ahead, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. Admittedly, you can't see much of it, but you can see it. So I don't have a hooded lid. It's only hooded if your upper or your static lid completely covers your mobile lid right down to your lash line. Then you have either a half or a full hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. Let me show you the difference. If I cover my mobile lid this side and close my eye, you can see I've got as much lid again that folds back away. And then if I do the same thing with my static lid, you can see I've got a lid there as well, which tucks back in. So that's why we have a similar issue with the transference of colours, etc. So all of my tutorials are hooded eye friendly. If you don't have a mobile lid here visible, you can still follow my tutorial. Get yourself a brush, something like this, flat top brush or um, like a pencil brush or something similar and just sketch out on your static lid where you want your mobile lid to be because I always put a deeper colour through the crease so if you have created a new crease for yourself here the deeper colour will give the illusion that that part of the eye is further back so you're basically creating a mobile lid on your static lid Yes, that's going to reduce the space between your new crease and your brow. So just use slightly smaller brushes than I do each time and you'll be absolutely fine. Talking of brushes, I'm going to... Everyone keeps raving about e.l.f. Uh, brushes. So I thought I'd give their a blending eye brush a go. Because finally, after months and months and months and months and months of being out of stock, the UK has finally can get their hands on this poreless putty primer in shade Universal Sheer because Jeffree Star um, approved it and it's sold out everywhere like that now in America they've restocked both in Ulta and on the ELF site quite a few times but the UK no we're second class citizens we don't get to have it that quickly So I thought, as I was buying that, I thought I'd get one of their brushes to try. But I want to start off with one that's a little bit bigger than that, in terms of brush a dimension. So I'm going to start off with this. If you look in my description box, I've got a, um, a film listed where I recommend brushes to you. This is one of the AliExpress ones, and this is Tapered Blending Brush number 6. Um, it's slightly bigger in circumference or diameter as you can see but it's a lot looser packed and that's what I want initially for blending the colours out so time to shut up and put some colour on my face okay I'm going to start off with sweet spot okay there's a reasonable amount of kick up in the pan but at least that does mean you're picking pigment up. So I'm just going to start tapping this because obviously I've not set this primer with anything, this chrome pebble eyeshadow base. I'm just going to take this halfway across. 
I like to leave sort of three or four mils below the top of my brow. And I'm just going to do, once I've patted the pigment into place and effectively set the base, I'm then just going to do a little bit of circular blending to make sure we haven't got any clumps of it built up anywhere. And just to soften the edges slightly. So this is making me even more angry that that Palooza is not... Why couldn't they have done a shimmery version of this shade as the central colour rather than... I mean, where are you going to use it apart from bloody festivals? I mean, it's not like you're going to... You know, you do. You could you could quite easily use this for work. You could put, um, you know, stinger all over your your lid and then deepen up with either totally bugging or buzzkill, and that would be absolutely fine for work. But you know, you can't exactly bung bleed and glitter on, can you? Like out of the office. I'd think you're doing the walk of shame to come to work in the morning. Although if you're doing the walk of shame in a suit. What sort of party were you having last night? You don't know what the walk of shame is. You're too young. I'll explain when you're older. And yes, I'm talking to my god kids there if they're watching, which they probably are. Because I know Kieran likes winding his brother and sisters up by singing my intro repeatedly at them when they're trying to concentrate on other things which I shouldn't laugh at because it's him being naughty, but it is quite amusing. Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off on a clean washcloth. I actually prefer using a washcloth now rather than my colour switch because I've found, um, particularly with natural hair brushes, I haven't got many of them but I have got a few, um, it, it's more gentle on the bristles and also what I did notice when I was using blood sugar, the pigment in that was so strong, I'd clean my, my next brush off and come back with some of the pigment from the previous colour I'd used. So right, I'm going to go into Stinger, which is the lightest shade. And I'm just going to pop that on the inner part of my upper lid like so you can see it is more of a pastel shade compared to this one I'm just going to blend where the two colours meet just to soften that line off a little bit this is a really pretty colour I mean you could quite easily just sweep that all across your lid as I said deepen up with the mustard that's in here and it'd be fine for work in fact it'd be really quite nice for spring summer for work because uh, you, know, you don't have to just stick to neutrals I mean obviously you know, I wouldn't necessarily advocate turning up with some of the eye looks that I've done which are a little bit crazy to say the least um, but there's no reason you can't use a pastel shade on your lid Right, now this side, because I'm blinding this one, it got pulled around a lot when I was a kid and you can see I've got these really deep creases here. So I do actually have to just stretch that lid out because the circular blending doesn't get rid of that striping that I've got there. Normally doing circular blending, it very, very gently moves the skin on your eye around so that you don't get that striped effect, but because the creases are so deep just there I do actually have to stretch my uh, lid out just slightly and then again I'm just going to buff over I'm really hoping this shows in the camera it shows in my mirror the difference between the two shades I really hope it shows up when I'm editing because in my viewfinder here it's not always as obvious because um, obviously the viewfinder isn't as HD as the camera is right clean the brush off and now I'm going to try that elf brush see what it's like 
give it a quick wipe, make sure there's no packing dust in it. And I'm going to go into the deepest shade in here, Buzzkill, which is uh, like a Dijon mustard shade, which I really like, or a baby nappy poop colour. I'm just going to run this in windscreen wiper movement through the crease. Obviously, if you've moved your crease up, you follow the line that you've created. I'm just going to pop a little bit more pigment on this brush. And I'm just going to do little circular movements, tiny, 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 holding the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible. Tiny little circular movements going towards the nose as we come in and then reverse in the direction and blending away from the nose as we come back out just to soften those edges and to blend it in with the colours we've already put down and as I said if you've had to create yourself a new lid and you know a new crease putting this darker colour in will give you the illusion that this part of the eye is further away because dark colours recede, light colours come forward. So it's a way of tricking. Obviously when people get up close they're going to be able to see, but from normal chatting distance they wouldn't be able to tell. If you've got your blending nicely enough they shouldn't be able to tell. Just going to pick a little bit more of this up and I'm just going to pop it on the outer third of the lid. Oh, I forgot, I've not set this bit yet, I need to tap it on. So I'm just going to tap that on to build the colour up. What I like about this Crow and Pebble um, eyelid primer is that it's not sticky to touch, so your bristles don't get sticky and you're not transferring any stickiness back if you have to, you know, dip into the pan again to, to build more colour up. This is taking a little bit of time to build up, but it is getting there. But this is what I was saying, I wish they, I wish this was not the deepest shade. I, I'm glad they included it, I would still want this included in the palette, but I think they could have gone a little bit deeper because If I was doing a look for a night out with this, I would be pulling um, a chocolate shade up from one of Jeffrey's palettes probably, or my new brew palette from September Rose. Actually that's got some really nice yellows and browns in it, I could probably pull a brown from there. Let me know if you want to see me do a look using brew and this palette together. If you want to see that let me know in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll get onto that for you. If you haven't seen brew it is one of my most more recent films. Um, September Rose that did the slush palette. Still working on slush too if you're waiting for that by the way. It is still going to happen. Uh, has brought out she called it a neutral palette, but for me it's not boring, so I don't think it's neutral. Because to me, neutral lick was boring, and her brew palette is beautiful. It's got some lovely yellows and oranges in it, as well as the brown tones. So you can really get some interesting looks with it, even though it's technically a neutral palette. So again, I'm just really lightly buffing this to blend that line out and then I'm going to tap some pigment on to build the colour up on this outer third this really is baby nappy poop brown isn't it <laughs> it's weird in the pan it definitely looks more Dijon but once you get it on your eyes it's not as deep as it looks in the pan Yeah, I would I would definitely combine this palette with the brew palette. Um, 
I do have a discount for September Rose. It is listed in my description box as always. You don't have to use it, but you know, you save money. And all of my discount codes are very clearly shown whether I earn money from them or not. Anything that I do earn from them, I just use to buy more makeup or more things to try for the channel. So, And trust me, I don't make a huge amount from any of them. I'm not one of these, you know, gurus that pulls in hundreds and thousands of pounds a week. I wish. Actually, no, I don't wish, because then you probably wouldn't... You probably wouldn't then believe my reviews as well as you do, because I'm just... I had a company message me this morning asking me could they send me a lipstick. And I'm like, well, you can if you like, but I'm going to give you a very honest review, and if you're not happy with that, don't send it to me. So... Just waiting to hear back and see what they say on that. Right, I'm going to grab this Morphe M321 brush. sort of shape because it's been in a pot there we go and I'm going to use I think the lightest of the shimmers in here sunburst wow okay this this kicks up a lot in the pan can you see that never go into a pressed pan with a wet brush but I am going to, if I can find my bloody setting spray, okay. I am going to wet this to put it on my lid. Um, I've been using this vanilla and coconut one for my Heart Rev. Basically, I load the brush up and then I spritz the brush. I dry the ferrule off to make sure that no moisture goes down to loosen the glue that's holding the bristles. And for this eye, I'm going to use a little separate mini mirror down here so you can see what I'm doing. Because obviously, if I close this eye, blinding that one, I can't see anything with this one. So I'm just going to pop this onto the two thirds of the lid. But so far, I haven't had any pigment added. Now, I've not cut the lid because I want to see how much opacity these have, whether it's opaque enough to actually go over the laughably darkest shade in the palette, which it appears to be too, which is lovely. Actually it's a very very pretty colour once you get that on your lid. That's actually really pretty. Right, so I'm going to clean the brush off and dry it, obviously, on the um, washcloth. See? Clean and dry. And I'm going to go back in, pick up all of that loose pigment that was laying on the top of the thing. That's why I don't worry if it kicks pigment up, because you can just go back in and pick it up next time round. And then I'm going to wet the brush, dry the ferrule off. And with this one, if I don't stretch my lid out here, the shimmers fill the deep creases up. And then as I move my eye through the day, I get showers of it coming down my face, which is not great. So if you don't have to stretch your lid out like I just did please don't because the skin on your eyelids is the thinnest skin on your body it's as delicate as tissue paper but as I said mine was pulled around 40 odd years ago it's only actually been the last sort of three years really that those deep creases have developed though prior to that I didn't need to pull my lid around at all which was fantastic. Right, I'm going to pause you while I go off camera and pop a bit of foundation on and then I'll be back to 
to finish off this eye look with you so you'll see me instantly I'll see you next time I press the record button I am back and for once I have normal coloured brows I've been going through a coloured brow phase but the pomades that I've got are purple, blue and yellow and I thought doing yellow on them would be a little bit too much plus I still had a bit of blue left from yesterday which didn't want to go away right uh, I'm going to grab my flat top brush and go into Buzzkill because um, one of the symptoms of my fibro one of my facial symptoms of my fibro is that my eyes have got very very tender um, and they're weeping a lot add to that the fact that my hay fever this year is uh, well let's just say it's, it's here um, I just I cannot keep even my really really good eyeliners just they're just sort of separating and running up into all of the fine lines that you get when you're in your 40s and completely ruins the eye look plus to be honest with this one I would want to use a brown eyeliner and my last brown eyeliner dried up so. but what I have been doing is using the same colour that I've used through the crease to initially go under the lashes like that and then I pack a lot on the edge and just stamp it just right on the edge there so it sort of imperceptibly gives you just that slightly deeper line just just there and what that does is it gives you the same effect of a winged liner it pulls your eyes up and makes them look a little bit more youthful and smiley eyes rather than sad eyes and then I'm going to grab this brush this was actually the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette and I'm going to go into I think I think totally bugging and I'm just going to buff that just underneath the lower lash line not going over this bit here where we put the deeper line just just along that lower lash line there to just soften it and to mirror the colours that we've got up above the eye you don't have to do this you can just leave the darker shade there but I just like to, to soften it a little bit and smudge the edges just slightly I just think it's a little bit more flattering especially when you're the side of 40 that I am another thing that I like doing is when I put the highlight on as well as just going here I bring it down to meet here now highlight very good question Mm, now I could do a gold or I could do a whole white. Mm, I think I'm going to grab the glass skin highlighter from River Cosmetics R-I-V-E-H-R this is shade number one it's an absolute bitch to get into but it's a very beautiful champagne with a hint of pink actually this is a about a ten year old lip brush that I bought from eBay literally a decade ago but it's great for tucking a colour up under the tail of the brow there. Yeah, I think this is the right, the right sort of shade that I want. 
I think white would be too stark and gold would detract from this but this sort of neutrally champagne just with a hint of pink because obviously I've got a cool toned or neutral to cool toned skin it just really helps those yellows to pop I'm going to pause you one last time while I chuck some more highlighter all over my face, put some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with my hair and I'll be right back for my final look and initial thoughts on this palette. I am back. Hair not as floofy today which is nice. Right, so, what are my initial thoughts on the uh -huh, um, palette? Um, usual Colourpop standard when it comes to the mattes, so they lay down well, they blend easily. Uh, the deepest shade in here, that buzzkill in the, the bottom corner here, that, um, that took a bit of building up but it did build up. I could get it to the sort of shade that I wanted. I would have liked to have seen a nice chocolate brown in here though to really really deepen up the eye looks. Um, I really don't understand why they chose to put a glitter in here that you cannot use on your eyes. Um, there's, it's not like there's not enough yellow shades in the world that you could use. I mean, if you couldn't do a nice bright light yellow in here as a shimmer or a pressed glitter, why didn't you just move all the shades up one and give us a nice deep dark brown in the bottom corner as well as this mustard brown that you've given us, this sort of mustardy yellowy brown. Um, or just grind those... Um, glitter flakes smaller so you could use them on the eye. That that really is bugging me with this particular palette because I love the look this has produced but with not having a really deep shade in here and not being able to use the glitter shade on your eyes you're not going to get very many different looks out of this. The majority of looks you do are going to look something like this. Maybe with a deeper shimmer on the lid, you know, the, 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 the gold shimmer or the bronzy gold shimmer. But you're pretty much going to get this look every time. Whereas I felt with the other palettes you had more of a variety, more options. You could get more than just sort of two looks out of it because to be honest I think you'd get this look and then like I said if you wanted to use it for work sweeping one of the lighter colours over your lid and using the, the mustard colour through your crease. That's pretty much all you're going to be able to do with this palette. Which is frustrating because it is a really, really nice palette. It's, you know, it's the usual colour pop quality when it comes to the mattes and the shimmers. It, it's just so frustrating that they didn't put as much thought into this as they seem to have done with the others. I mean, look, if I if I grab the just my luck, the green. If you look at this in comparison, so with the Just My Luck, you've got you've got mint green and sage green, and then you've got all of these across here, which are mattes as well. So you, although you've still got five mattes in here. If you look at them side by side, can you see that there's much more of a gradient in this palette than there is in this one? 
this one from a distance looks more samey whereas this one you can go yeah I can really see and they've got you know nice deep colours in here so you can do a deeper evening style look which you can't really achieve with this one unless you pair it with another palette um, and that that for me is very very disappointing because you know it feels like yellows and greens etc are going to be the colours for this year um, and it's it's very very frustrating when they could have done something so stunning with this I mean don't get me wrong I'm still going to reach for this but I know I'm going to end up with this look unless I pair it with another palette so it, if you've not got very many yellows in your eyeshadow palette collection already then yeah it might be worth grabbing um, but if you've already got a lot of yellows I I'm not sure I'd recommend buying this particular one unless you are a collectionist and you've got all of the other monochromatic palettes and want to complete the set right on that rather sadly disappointing note I'm going to finish this review So you always get honesty from me, whether it's good honesty or, in this case, rather disappointing honesty. Um, oh, the lipstick, by the way, is Hourglass Confessions. I woke up. They're normally sold in pairs. I'm guessing the second one was like this. Um, I really like the Hourglass Confession formula. Um, I picked up these two which were my one desire and at night um, in the new year sale from beauty and I was so excited because it was in the lilac packaging rather than the gold and then when I was on Depop the other day someone was selling a set which has that one which is I woke up if only and I can't live without. So I was super excited because it means I've now got three of these holders so I can have three colours on the go at once. Um, and this cost me 17 quid on Depop for three whereas normally they're 34 quid for one. So yeah, uh, that made me very happy indeed. Uh, setting spray is my Gerard Cosmetics Slay All Day. I'm on the coconut scent now. Love these. They are by far my favourite of the setting sprays. Um, discount code for Gerard is listed uh, with all my other discount. Oh, there's the Getty Perf uh, lipstick I was looking for the other day. With all my other discounts in my description box. So. Um, please, if you are one of my subscribers, please double check you are still subscribed because YouTube are unsubscribing people, they're unringing the bell, they're just not being very helpful to smaller creators right now. Uh, if you're new here, hi, hello, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, do have a look at some of my other reviews which end on a more positive note. Uh, but at least you can see if this is your first film of mine that you're experiencing, you always get the truth of me. Please or offend, you always get the truth. So, on that note, I do have many other films you can watch. Feel free to pop a playlist on and indulge, or just have a look at the most recent films and see if you've missed any. 
So, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.